Hello everyone, and welcome back to Real Time. I'm Tyler. And I'm Molly. And here we talk about the movies we like. And the ones we don't. Now today we got, we have the Mummy Trilogy, the uh, one starring Brendan Fraser from Universal. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk about these and uh, why we love them so much. Yep. Sounds good. So, the first Mummy star starring Brendan Fraser was released in 1999, directed by... Uh, Stephen Summers. This is about the about High Priest Imhotep, who was uh, cursed and mummified alive because he was hooking up with Pharaoh's mistress. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm Can't do that. No, nope, not allowed. And so he gets brought back, and he basically has screw you power. He can do whatever he wants, mm -hmm. and he's basically got to our world and wreak havoc. Yep. And he's trying to bring back his his mummy girlfriend, yeah. who he sees in the reincarn in her reincarnation of uh, Evelyn, which actually no, that's not really that's not really what's going on. That's the plot of the 1932 mummy movie. Hmm. What's going on here is he. Um, we'll, we'll get we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. Okay. We'll get to why he thinks that she's uh, his his girlfriend, Anak Sunamun. Yeah. All right. Who so, else is in this movie? Well, like we said, Brendan Fraser in this is in this movie, and he is absolutely killing it. Oh yeah, uh, for sure. Evelyn is played by Rachel Weisz, probably my first uh, crush growing up. So with this movie, that I realized I like girls. Hey, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Well, John Hanna as her brother Jonathan. <laughs> John plays nice. Jonathan. Nice. That's that's kind of funny when that happens in movies. Mm. Arnold Vosloo plays Imhotep. The, uh, the uh, villain of the movie, eh, kind of, a little bit. What do you mean? Well, yeah, he he's the antagonist, and he's trying to, and, and he's doing some bad stuff. But it's not like he really wants to conquer the, the earth. He just wants his girlfriend back. I guess, but he sure, you know. Yeah, he's killing lots of people. Kills people to do it, so I'd say he's pretty bad. Oh well, yeah, he's. We, we're not gonna update you, Adobe Reader. Go away. Anyways, yeah, he's he's a bit more complex than a you know just black and white villain. He's you know he just he he he, he want he wants his girl back. Mm -hmm. And honestly, who can really blame him for that? Yeah. But yeah, he is killing several people. And yeah. But they, they shouldn't have opened the box. Fair enough, I guess. <laughs> uh, Kevin J. O'Connor plays Benny, the slimy little turd that works for Imhotep. Jonathan Hyde as the leader of the American group, although he's very much British. Uh, Dr. Alan Chamberlain. Uh, Odin Fair as Ardeth Bay, who... You ever notice that they never actually say his name in, this, in The Mummy? Yeah, because I don't know who that is. He's the, the Medjai. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they never say his name in, no, the, yeah. in the first movie. I just know him as the Magi guy. Now, funny thing, in the 1932 Mummy, the Mummy Imhotep went under the alias Ardeth Bay. Oh. Uh, Eric Avery plays Dr. Terrence Bay, um, basically Evelyn's b boss at the uh, library that she's working at. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Dunham plays Mr. Henderson, one of the... American Cowboys also going after the treasure. Corey Johnson plays Mr. Daniels, another one of them. Tuck Watkins plays Mr. Burns, the unfortunate uh, guy with glasses who unfortunately can't see without him. Mm -hmm. This man is practically Velma without his glasses. Omid Dejali as Warden, Warden Hassan in this movie, the uh, very stinky, very fat uh, guy who we, we initially see you know, he's in charge of the prison that Rick is at. Yeah. And at one point in this movie, we see this guy's penis. That is true. You know, we, he, when he gets the uh, scarab going into him, he uh, he accidentally rips a hole in his pants and his wiener pop, plops out. Yeah. You you can see it a little bit, and it's kind of funny. <laughs> it's just, it's just, oh, that's a penis. Yeah, I never noticed it until I watched it with you, which is probably good because then I was an adult. Yeah, when I, I watched it earlier, I was just a kid. I never noticed it until the internet pointed out, it out to me. 
and now I can't unsee it. Yeah. This is like Venus. Yeah, I always look for it now every time I watch the movie. Uh, Aaron Ipale plays Pharaoh Seti the first, the uh, Pharaoh that Anox the Moon and Imhotep, you know, assassinate because uh, he found out that they were hooking up. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernard Fox plays Captain Winston Havelock, the uh, pilot that really just wants to die and drink because he's had enough of everything. Yeah. This guy is so awesome. I love him. <laughs> yeah. And then Patricia Velasquez plays Anox the Moon. Pharaoh's mistress and uh, Imhotep's uh, you know, his, Lover. his lady friend. Yeah. Now that's yeah. We we really went in depth with this cast. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, so I saw this movie when I was uh, at a, at a young age for the first time. I was like maybe five or six, and you know at, when you watch something that young and like pretty consistently. It really grows on you. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a just a pure and simple fun adventure movie. Yeah. You know, nothing more to say. Like what you see is what you get. It's just balls to the wall fun throughout the whole thing. Oh yeah, very very fun. You know, and like we said before, Brendan Fraser is just killing it in this movie. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love him. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was definitely, I think, made for this role, or this role was made for him. Either way. I mean, I could see some some other actors doing a better job in the role. No. Like maybe Bruce Campbell or Kurt Russell, but no. as far as I'm concerned, I don't care. I still love Brendan Fraser yeah. in this role. Yeah. You know, now those two may have done it, may have been better in it, but it they wouldn't different. they wouldn't have done it at you know. The way that Brendan Fraser d did it, which yeah. you know, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. I, I, like I said, I love him in this in this role. This is by far my favorite movie with him. Yeah, me too. Probably. Yeah. And like like we said, Rachel Weisz. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm just gonna come out and say it. She is freaking hot in this movie. <laughs> so is Brendan Fraser. Yes, he is. Yep. Like, there's just a lot of attractive people in all three of these movies. Yeah, there really are. Yeah. You can... Yeah. You know, they the, cast beautiful people. You know, this one and the and the next movie have Fraser, Weiss, uh, Vosloo, uh, Patricia Velasquez, uh, Oded Fair. You know, lots of, you know, very conventionally attractive, you know, beautiful people. Mm -hmm. You know, so these, these two movies are a bisexual's dream. Very easy on the eyes, yeah. And... And all these people, you know, fit their roles perfectly. It's it's great. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I like I said, I was watching this movie a lot when I was younger, and it's it really scared me every time. <laughs> you know, just it, the Imhotep's mummy it just looks yeah. so creepy. Yeah, the mummy is pretty scary. And like, I, yeah, I, it was scaring me every time, but I was watching it. <laughs> a lot. I kept coming back. And it kept scaring you? Yeah. Even though you kept watching it? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I know I'm doing this to myself, but, you know, that's the cool. I'm, I'm fine with this. I like this. Yeah. So, uh, what was your favorite part of this movie? Oh, my favorite part. That is a hard one. Because there is a lot to like in this movie. Yeah, there um, is. Like, like, every part is my favorite part. I just mm. like the whole thing. Um, but I guess if I had to choose... Um, okay. Uh, if I had to choose... Uh, I don't know. Maybe when they're first into the... They're at first underground looking around trying to find... Try, uh, trying to find the... Uh... The, the Book of Amun Ra. Yeah, and then they stumble across, you know, Emotep instead. Yeah. Well, it's kind of good. Yeah, like, you know, like, it sets up what's going to happen. Like, Evie's just just needling Rick about how mummies were made because, you know, it's, yeah. it's a very creepy process. You know, they, they rip out all your guts, they mm. take your brain out through your nose, which, I mean, you're, you're dead when that happens. So, so yeah, so... Although, she did... She did uh, mess up by saying that they take out your heart. They did not do that when with, uh... Uh, mummification. The Egyptians thought that um, they thought that the 
the heart was, you know, where like the brain. Almost, yeah, they. Yeah. That's what. That's their line of thinking. Mm-hmm. They. They weren't. You know, they. They didn't exactly have the best medical uh, well, knowledge yeah, back was then. Very long time ago. This is so. you know a couple thousand years ago, <laughs> yeah. but Evie might have just been messing with him, yeah, you know, to yeah. freak him out. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. You know, like and uh, Jonathan's like you know messing around, mm-hmm. playing golf with rocks, and then. He this. accidentally brings down Imhotep's yeah, sarcophagus. It just falls from the ceiling. It's like, oh, oh, we found a mummy. <laughs> yeah. What about you? What's your favorite part? Ah, there is so much to love I know, in this it's, movie. It's hard to choose. Um, well, I. It's really hard to choose. It is. This is. This is one of those movies that I can put on any time and just have a yeah. great, grand old time. Yeah. It's. The- Beginning's good, the middle's good, the ending's good. No, there's there, there's quite a few problems with this movie, but I, none of that matters. It's basically perfect yeah, for me. Yeah, like I don't care. I don't care about the problems when I'm watching a good movie. Uh, but let's see. There's a there's a, the opening uh, a backstory with Imhotep. That one was yeah, pretty cool, yeah, pretty like neat. That. There is um there's the 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 uh, attack at Hominoptera with. Rick in the French Foreign Legion fending off the uh, Tuaregs. That was pretty, mm-hmm. pretty action packed, pretty neat. Uh, there was. Oh, I like the boat scene there's too. There's the there was the boat scene. Yeah. I was about to say that. <laughs> I like that scene mm-hmm. too. There's so much. There's so much to, there to really watch. is. It's hard. There, there's the uh, the the uh, fight with Rick and all the all the mummy priests and then yeah. the soldiers. That was pretty mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. There's their escape from Hominoptera as it's collapsing in on yeah, itself. Yeah, that's fun. You know, <laughs> there's just too many to choose. Too from. many to choose from. Yeah. I'm not gonna choose one because I love all of it so much. Uh, yeah, me too. Um, I don't think we need to do favorite characters because this is probably gonna be a, be a repeat of we love them all yeah. so much. Uh, if my top two, oh well, I okay, my top three are probably in no particular order. The top two are probably between Evelyn and uh, Rick. Yeah. Because they're so cool, and I like Evelyn because she's she's smart and cool, but yeah, she's also kind of kind of ditzy. She's, she's kind of silly. Funny. Yeah, so I really like her. Um, but I also like Jonathan because he's funny as well. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a goofball. Yeah, but the characters are really good. I really like the characters in this movie. So, um, do yeah. you have favorite characters? Yeah, I agree with you. Um, mm-hmm. Those three are really great. I love Imhotep. He's a great yeah. villain. Oh, yeah. You know, very sympathetic motivations. Yeah. Even though, again, he's killing, killing lots people. of people. So I don't, I don't have too much sympathy for him, but I see where he's coming from. You know, you know, at the end of the day, this man just wants to, you know, be with the, the one he loves. Yeah. So, can't really blame him for that. Yeah. And also, yes, he is bringing the ten plagues of Egypt, but is he... <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part, it seems like he's not doing that intentionally, except for the flies. Yeah. But again, those are just flies. I don't know. I mean, he wakes up and all of a sudden there's like a swarm of locusts. I don't think he it's really it's meant to do that intentionally. It just is what happens when he wakes up, I guess. He oh, has no control. I, I, I don't know. I remember a, a, another scene that I forgot to, to talk about. Okay. Uh, when um, Benny comes across Imhotep for the first time, and he brings all sorts of yeah. like necklaces out, praying to every witch god, you know, saying, "Okay, one of these has got to work." Yeah. <laughs> and then he gets to the uh, the Star of David, and he starts praying in Hebrew. And Imhotep says, "Oh man, you, you you speak Hebrew? I can use you." Yeah. Which is, you know, he's like, "Oh, the language of the slaves." So, I mean, some people are somehow confused with that and the ten plagues of Egypt thing, like thinking. Okay, Imhotep was around for the slaves, so, but why does he know about the Ten Plagues of Egypt? Um, because the Ten Plagues of Egypt happened when the slaves were there. You know, the, the Hebrew slaves were there in Egypt. There's no, there's, there's plenty of crossover here. Yeah. You know, it, and even if the Ten Plagues happened, you know, when he was younger, that's still something he would know about. He would know about the Hebrew slaves. I, I don't oh, know. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I, I think people on the internet are just making too big a, a, a thing of that. That, yeah. that seems pretty straightforward Yeah, to me. I never questioned it. You know? I got it. it you know, it, it, it wasn't exactly like Imhotep could watch the, the Prince of Egypt at the time. He lived it. 
to see you. Um, yeah, so, yeah, really good scenes and really good characters. Yep, really fun movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, some of the CGI doesn't really hold up as much, but... Mm-hmm. So, like, they were doing motion capture for Imhotep. Arnold Bosley was, like, you know, doing all that. So, it doesn't look great, but this is one of the first times they ever did that. Yeah. So, so you got to make some allowances. Yeah. yeah. The, the really bad CGI comes in the next one, mm-hmm. though, but we'll get yeah. to that uh, in a little bit. Yeah. So, is there anything more we have to say about The Mummy? Mm, it's definitely my favorite of the trilogy. Yeah, me too. I feel like it's an easy, easy anyone's favorite of the trilogy, I would say. Actually, there's one person whose uh, favorite was the third one. Oh, gosh. Who? That was uh, Roger Ebert. The, uh, the, the, the famous film critic thought Tomb of the Dragon Emperor was his favorite one. Mm, I don't think he's, he's right. Anyways, oh, I for, I for, I forgot one thing. Uh, I said we were talking about we're going to talk about how Imhotep mistook Evelyn for uh, um, an ox in the moon. Mm-hmm. So uh, he uh, so a couple of the Americans they open the box that says, "Hey, don't open this, or else this mummy guy will come here and eat you." Yeah. Basically. Mm-hmm. So they're like, "We're going to open it. No one's going to raise a mummy." Little mm-hmm. did they know, yeah. Evie was going to raise a mummy. Uh, and so the first guy that Imhotep comes across is the um, is the guy Burns who can't, who has Velma eyes. Mm-hmm. He loses his glasses. Benny, the little jerk, steps on him. Well, although he didn't really mean to do that, that was an accident. Mm-hmm. And so he can't see. And Imhotep takes this man's eyes and gains his poor eyesight. Yeah, <laughs> that is just <laughs> that's just goofy. But I love mm-hmm. it. And so. Through those eyes, he can't really. He he sees that okay, that that that's kind of a, a knock to the moon, right? Yeah, that, that looks like that, her, that, yeah. close enough. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, it's just funny, like it it goes from horrifying to funny, like quickly, because mm-hmm. you know we see that he took his eyes and his tongue so he can see, so he can speak. It's like ah oh, man, that poor guy, and then we we see that oh, he stole. The legally blind guy's yeah. eyes, so he can't see very well. Yeah. That'd be the same if he stole my eyes. M- mine too. As long as the contacts don't come with them, he's just gonna. He's 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 just screwed. <laughs> and while we're on the subject of Benny, because we we, we, we we mentioned him a little bit. Yeah. I. Yeah, like he was he he was a slimy little turd, but his death felt a little a little bit um, a little bit much. You know, in my opinion, at least. You know, mm-hmm. This guy gets trapped in the uh, collapsing temple. Yeah. So, you know, he's not getting out. Nope. And then all these flesh-eating scarabs come out, and then they just mob him. I don't know. I just feel bad for the guy. Like, um, he, he was a jerk, but I don't think he deserves yeah. quite that much. I didn't really feel too bad for him, because, yeah, he's a jerk. But sh- I guess he doesn't deserve to be eaten alive by bugs. So M- makes for I guess. A, makes for a memorable death though. Oh yeah, definitely. So next is gonna be the Mummy Returns. Yep, the uh, <laughs> the sequel that was not quite as good, but still pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. Now the Mummy Returns. This has. Basically the same cast, so mm-hmm. we're going to save some time on that. But it has a few new people. Uh, for one, it 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 also has Freddie both as Alex, Rick and Evie's son, mm-hmm. who, by the way, this kid he was such a fan of the first Mummy movie that he gave up a chance to audition for a you know a little uh little fantasy movie you may may not have heard about it Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone mm-hmm. you know for the role of Harry Potter to be in this movie oh wow because he just loved the mummy so much and I can't really blame him honestly <laughs> yeah. and it, you know it worked out for the best Daniel Radcliffe turned out to be a pretty good Harry Potter yep um this movie also features Alan Armstrong as Mr. Havez one of the 
bad guys in this movie. He's he's the leader of this mm-hmm. Imhotep cult, which is wild to think about. That yeah. in the in the years between the first one and the second one, this cult dedicated mm-hmm. to Imhotep rose up, and there was like no indication of it in the first movie. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, this guy, this uh, cult who wants to bring back this uh, this creepy uh, mummy guy. He he wants to come back, want to bring him back. That's it's a little weird, but okay, go off, I guess. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Adewale Akinui Agbaje, I, I, I hope I didn't butcher that too much, stars as, um, you know, Mr. Havez's basically right-hand man, Loch Nah, who is just trying his best not to absolutely murder Alex throughout this whole yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, a, a, a little-known actor, you may not have, you may not have heard of him, named Dwayne Johnson, uh, debuts in this movie as the Scorpion King. Mm-hmm. Wonder what happened to him. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I see. He was credited as The Rock for this movie. Okay, I know who that guy uh, is yeah, now. The <laughs> yeah, The yeah. Rock. Yeah, The Rock. The Rock, of course, would get his own um, spinoff from this movie with the Scorpion King, who is not exactly the same character as he played in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Rock's character in that one is basically the ancestor of the Scorpion King we see in this movie. Okay. I d- a little confusing, but all right, it's fine. But the, the weird thing is, though, you know, the, 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 the Scorpion King is a spinoff of a sequel of a remake of, of a movie from the 1930s. And then that spinoff, in turn, got its own line of sequels. Man, you're losing me. I'm lost. It's okay. Just, <laughs> just smile and wave, boys. Okay. Smile and wave. Uh, where were we? Scorpion King. Yeah. And, you know, the, the Rock's character in this movie is pretty interesting. He's a... He was a, uh... He was a guy in, in ancient times who was given the power by, by a, a god to, uh, you know, conquer his enemies. And then he gets, uh, he gets trapped, and then a couple thousand years later, he gets brought back. Yeah, I've seen Black Adam. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 that that's that is funny to think about though. That like twenty years apart, The Rock plays basically the same character. Yeah, yeah, they are very similar. It's pretty funny. And the, and like we said, this is The Rock's like first movie. Mm-hmm. And for his debut role, I think he he holds the record for the highest you know paycheck of a debut performance, oh. which mm-hmm. makes sense. You know, he was very big in the WWE yeah, at the yeah. time. You know, he was the people's champion, so this makes sense. Yeah. This wasn't exactly his first, you know, on-screen appearance because he appeared on a. He appeared on a, a, whatever Star Trek TV show was going on a little bit before that, and also uh, that '70s show where he played his dad, Rocky Johnson, hmm. in, in an episode where they all went to go watch wrestling. Nice. Yeah, that's that's funny to me that. He, he plays his dad in, in an episode of that 70s show. Yeah. Anyways, we're not here to talk about The Rock. Well, we are, but... So, The Mummy Returns. It takes place, you know, after the first one. Obviously, that's how sequels work. And, uh... F- um, Rick and Evie, they have they have a son, Alex. Mm-hmm. How about he's probably like 7 to 10 years old. I'm bad at judging children's ages. Well, see, it's, it's funny. So, the first movie, like... In, when we get to the present day, ish of when that's ha- that's taking place, the the movie says 1925. Okay. And then we've fa- then we flash forward three years later to 1928. Now this movie, now the Mummy Returns takes place in 1933, and Alex says that he's eight years old, but that would have meant he would have been born in 1925, not n- not 1928. You see, the math is weird with this. Yeah. So that means he would have to have been born not long after no, the first no, movie? No, no, that He lost me with the dates. No, no. Th- then when does atten- the first movie take place? The, it opened in 1925, and then they fast forward three years later to 1928. Okay. So, and then this one takes place in 1933, yeah. five years after the first one, and Alex says he's eight years oh. old. So that doesn't add up at all. No, it does not. <laughs> he was adopted. Try to keep up. I smacked him off camera. There's, there is no camera. I smacked him. All of this is off camera. <laughs> I smacked him. Let it be known. Anyways, but 
just just don't think about it. Just don't think about yeah, it. I think it's just confusing. The, I, 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 I think they just like didn't really pay attention to the dates, but it's whatever. It's okay. Probably. No, no one in Hollywood knows how to do math, I guess. I don't know how to do math. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> <sighs> so, re- regardless of all that, this cult of Imhotep wants to bring Imhotep back to life, which they do in mm-hmm. the first like 20 minutes of the movie. So that they can, you know, t- they, they want to bring him back so that he can fight the Scorpion King, kill him, and then take control of his army to rule the world. Okay, now Imhotep wants to rule the world? Um, okay, I guess, whatever. Yeah. That's... He's just extra angry now. Well, yeah. He's he, like, okay, I'm going to take over the world now since I didn't get my way last time. And, yeah, he... and. And uh, the reincarnation of Anox and Moon is with them too, and for some reason she's got the hot for him. Which I don't yeah. know, man. That always threw me off. It's like, how do you know that you're the reincarnation of this woman? I mean, you look just like her, yeah, but but other than that, like, how I, do you know? I don't know. This is a movie where they're literally bringing the dead back to life and fighting the yeah. rock as a scorpion. Yeah, you can't really. I can accept this. Don't think this. too much on it. It's fine, yeah. Yeah, like the the first one is is you know good old fashioned fun. This one, you gotta you gotta suspend your disbelief a little yeah, bit. Just, yeah. just just let things happen. Mm-hmm. It, you'll 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 sleep better that way. Yeah. And um, where were we? He uh yeah, yeah. The motivations between this one and the last one kind of don't add up a bit, but well, whatever. Yeah. He, he's he's extra upset. Yeah, yeah, I just thought as he's just mad because he didn't get his way last time, and now he wants to just do even more, even more damage. Just like, okay, I'm here, I'm evil now, let's, let's, let's do this. freaking go. Let's take over the world. And throughout all this, Alex put, I accidentally put on the bracelet of Anubis that shows him the way to get to the uh, temple where he's going to wake up. Mm-hmm. And he has seven days to get there before he dies. Because that's just how the bracelet works, yeah. I suppose. So you said when he he's going to wake up. What do you mean? Who's the he there? The, the Scorpion King. Okay, you gotta be clear. Well, I was. I said no. they were going to the Scorpion King's temple where he's gonna oh, wake I up. I didn't hear that, but okay. We need to pay attention, like I said. <laughs> There's gonna be some violence. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways. An- anyways. So, the bad guys capture Alex so that he can show them the way. And uh, so that they they can have this big the big fight. Mm-hmm. So they got to go through, you know, all sorts of desert. They got to go through this oasis of Amsher where all these pygmy mummies live that absolutely murder everyone. All the yeah. all the henchmen get absolutely murked. Yep. It's it's kind of kind kind of neat. Pretty interesting how they how they do stuff. Just swinging around, going through the the tall yeah. plants. Just that's. That's always been the scene that I remembered most because I don't usually watch any of th- this movie very much. Um, so when I watched it again, I was like, okay, like the main scene I remember is those little people running through the weeds and you can't see them. So that, that's the most mm. memorable for me are these little guys killing everybody. Mm. And yeah, you know, now, now that I think about it, this this movie in particular has been a lot. They, it's been the it's had a lot of templates for like memes and stuff lately just like you know uh, Izzy and Rick talking and then Rick sh- goes to shoot him um, or why is that the only one I'm thinking of or or really just any, or just but... like Amos have look, like looking around after he uh, tells the Scorpion King oh no no that guy's gonna kill you not me I haven't seen any but and that, those sure are just, those are just two off, off the top there's others yeah and um, now, now we get to the elephant in the room, the uh, the Scorpion King. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's just be honest, he looks pretty awful. Yeah, I've seen worse for sure. Oh yeah, I've seen worse, and but and, eh, he's not the best looking. And like we watched this on the 4K, we watch all three of these on their 4Ks, and it did not look as bad as I remember. Yeah. But it's still not great. It's not good. No. No. Like the. And credit to the uh, to the VX Vex artists, they were down to the wire, last finishing that at the last minute. Mm, that's probably why it looks like that. That's exactly why that looks <laughs> yeah. like that. 
Um, but yeah, I just noticed throughout the movie, I thought that the effects, the CGI, wasn't as good as the first one altogether. Well, like that's we, what I thought. Well, like I said, they were pretty if pressed for last, time. Yeah, I would understand. They were pretty pressed. Yeah. So the fact that it came out looking as good as, as well as decent as passable, I guess is. It's yeah. is to is to be commended at all. Yeah. Like yeah, we've seen worse, but this is mm. not good still. But yeah. yeah. It could always be worse. It can always be worse. Yes. You know, we've all seen the Incredible Bulk, and we wish we hadn't. I have no idea what you're talking about. Just. To, I don't think I want to know. We've all seen Birdemic, and we all wish there, we hadn't. Okay, I have seen that. Sort of. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, so. Uh, so they all get to the temple, and uh, Anoxuna Moon's reincarnation. Well, she's basically Anoxuna Moon by this point because Inwitep put her soul back in this body. She kills Evie because in the past, Evie was. Well, Evie's the reincarnation of Pharaoh's daughter. Yeah, that kind of came out of nowhere, but whatever. Yeah. It's fine. I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then Jonathan and Alex have to bring her back with the, the Book of the Dead. So, you know, she was gone for about five minutes. Yeah, not long. And Amotep's going, going to fight the Scorpion, right? You know, he's all pumped up. And then they, the, the gods, I guess, took away his powers. Like, hey, you know, we're going to do this fair. Don't don't use your powers, mm -hmm. you bald-headed demon. Yeah. So Amotep's like, yeah, sure, that's cool. I can do this. It's fine. Mm -hmm. And then when Scorpion King comes out, he's just realized, oh, no, I, I can't. I can't. I, I got to. I, I gotta I gotta play this safe. Yeah. Send him after send him after O'Connell yeah. over here. Go after him, not me. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know when when uh, Rick finally does kill the Scorpion King, this like makes I think this is like the only time where like you know uh, in, a, in in like an action movie or something where the the one liner he gives when he uh, kills the bad guy is actually pretty crucial to the plot. What did he say? Well, he said, so he said to him, go to hell and take your friends with you. And like, you know, mm -hmm. if in the movie, if you kill the Scorpion King, you can either send him and his army back to the underworld. Oh, yeah. Or take control of it. So he was like, he, he yeah. Yeah. He's, he, he's doing exactly what you said. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. That, that's actually pr pretty fitting. Yeah, yeah, it works. It worked out. And then, you know, we got uh, Imhotep and Rick hanging over the edge and, um, Rick's telling Evie, you know, get out of here, save yourself. But Evie runs through this collapsing t uh, pyramid to go yeah, r rescue him that. because she loved him. Yeah. And and with helps, you know, you know, pleading with, like, with Anoxy, hey, save please me, save please, me. I, I need help. And <laughs> Anoxy, she just like, nah. runs. Nah, it's like, wow. There. And you can pinpoint the part, the, the moment in that movie when that happens, where his heart <laughs> his rips heart in two. Yeah. Just like, oh, yeah. my, my man, I, I am so sorry. <laughs> Yeah. That, uh, that that you fell ooh. in love with this whore. She sucks, and I feel bad for you. Yeah. And, he, and at that point, he's he's already dead inside, so he just lets himself yeah, get taken. He just kills he's like, him, oh, basically, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. This I I got nothing left for this. I, yeah. I'm. Yeah, y'all are a better couple than us. I I can see that now. Mm. Yeah, and, and it's kind of it's kind of nice when he uh, looks at them and he's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish I had that, but <laughs> and then, my girl don't love me. <laughs> <laughs> and then they they get rescued by this um, by, by Izzy in his hot air balloon mm -hmm. that they've been traveling the whole time. Just last second, like, hey, I'm here. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So this, I I did watch this movie a lot when I was a kid, but not nearly as much as the first one, obviously, mm -hmm. but still enough. But. Watching the first one and this one back to back, I'm I'm just reminded how much better the first one yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, me too. I haven't watched this one a lot, and I see why. <laughs> the the it's yeah, first one is much better. Like if the first one is a movie that I can turn on anytime and be, be happy, this one I can, like if it's on TV, I might stick around to to, to finish it. Mm -hmm. But if I got other things to do, then. Yeah, I, I I have this movie. I'll watch yeah, it later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so this one's fine. I like it. I certainly do, but it's not the first one. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, what was your favorite part of this? I guess I will go with the scene with the little guys killing the people and they're running through the weeds and they can't see them. Ah, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's nice. It's kind yeah, of was pretty fun. Yeah, it's fun. I really liked the, um, the, the part when they were on the double decker bus fighting off the uh, the soldier no, mummies. That's a good one too. That one was pretty cool. Although yeah. there's a bit of continuity issue there. How so? So Imhotep sends four mummies after them. Mm-hmm. They kill three of them. Where did that other one go? He he couldn't make it. Like where where did he go? He fell apart on the run. Yeah, maybe he did. I don't know. But I, I could have sworn I saw like two mummies jump on jump on the walls on the left, two on the right. And that's so, four. Oh, yeah, so yeah. what happened to that other guy? I don't know. I didn't pay attention. So... I don't know. He's... I didn't really pay attention to how many mummies they were fighting off. And, and what's that brings him back to life, but he's in London, so poor guy. <laughs> he has to be in England. That's a very drab area. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. I'm, I'm just casually roasting England for no reason. <laughs> what did they do to me? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So, right. next is going to be Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Now, I, ha- I this is the one that I've watched the least. Yeah, this was only my second time watching it today. And, and Ooh, Sorry. And uh, watching it, I can see why. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to get to that one next. All right. <sighs> so, seven years after the release of the Mummy, Re- the Mummy Returns in 2001, we got... Tomb of the Dragon Emperor in 2008. Mm-hmm. Pretty long wait for uh, for the next uh, sequel, but hey, this, this will be pretty cool. I was 13 when this movie came out, so I was looking forward to it. I didn't actually get to see it in theater because I don't know why. It, that was almost 15 years ago, so who knows. Yeah, and I was younger than you, so I didn't really uh, care too much at the time. But, you know, I eventually watched this movie, and I was thinking, okay, that was pretty fun. Not uh, not as good as the last two, but, you know, pretty neat. Mm-hmm. So this movie stars the some of the usual cast, okay? Uh, first of all, this movie takes place in China, so no Ardith Bay or Imhotep. They're, they, they don't feature. They were actually both asked, you know, to come back for this movie. Yeah. But I think the way it goes, Arnold Vosloo didn't see a point in it because it was taking place in China. Mm-hmm. So it was like, eh, nah. And then uh, Otis Fair s- said, oh, no, Imhotep, what, then what, what, what's Arthur Bay going to be doing yeah. here? So he was out too. And Rachel Wise was, you know, offered the rollback, of course. She uh, didn't like the script, so she said, nah, I don't want to do this. I understand. So... They they recast her with Maria Bello, who to her credit is not doing a bad job, you know. But yeah, she's, but she's just not. She's doing fine. I have no problems with her per se. Yeah. Okay. It's just she's not um, Rachel Wise. Yeah, I would have preferred Rachel Wise, but yeah. Maria Bello is not doing a bad job. Uh, this movie also, well, did I say Jet Li was in this? No. Jet Li is in this. He plays the. Emperor of China, which one I don't remember. Even though we just watched this movie, emperor. I, I don't know. So, I, don't know. I think he he was playing the first emperor in this movie, uh, who, you know, basically united China, built a great wall, all that neat stuff. And uh, he he realizes that okay, uh, yeah, I have this really great emperor empire, but I'm still getting old. How do I fix that? So he goes to this uh, this witch, uh, played by Michelle uh, Yao, who, as of the last few years, has been absolutely killing it, mm-hmm. all in all sorts of ways. You know, Shang Chi turning red, uh, everything everywhere all at once. She she's just on fire the past few years, mm-hmm. and I and I I love seeing her in, in anything that I can. Yeah. And keep and again keeping up with our track record of track record of having attractive people in it her Jet Li um, really only those two uh, new additions I guess so, some people might like uh, Luke Ford as Alex yeah we have it we, have, and we you know this this recasting makes a bit makes a bit of sense though because Alex is older they need an older actor yeah yeah makes sense 
So yeah, I was fine with that recasting. But eh. uh, yeah, so honestly, this one is a bit. It, it just has a different feel from the, from the last two movies. Yeah, it is very different. Well, they're in a whole different part of the world. Yeah. For the first part, most part. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to finish the uh, the, the the opening. That's my bad. Um, yeah. So. Oh yeah. That that that's that's not my fault. I got <laughs> I got distracted. It's easy to get distracted. I got distracted Anyways, by Michelle Yeoh. Go ahead. So, she uh, you know, she grants him immortality, and you know, at the same time she's falling in love with one of his generals, and he she, he says, okay, I'm gonna give you anything you want now. She says, I want to be with him. And she's like, how about this? Uh, if uh, if you don't marry me, I'm gonna have this guy ripped apart by horses. She she says, you're not gonna keep your word. What are you talking about? So he says. Yeah, you're right. And it has it done anyways. Yeah. And then she curses him and all of his army to turn to turn to clay terracotta statues. Mm -hmm. So like in, in the mummy universe that's why that's what the terracotta statues are there for. Yeah. Because uh, a, a guy didn't want to let because the the emperor didn't want to let uh, this witch be with the one she loved. A lot, a lot a lot of that going on in these movies mm -hmm. if we're being completely honest. Yeah. But the emperor is also wanting to conquer the world, so he's a little—he's a lot less sympathetic than Imhotep. Mm -hmm. Which, speaking of Imhotep, Jonathan—he's John Hanna is back, thank God, in this. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we only have two returning actors, him and Brendan Fraser. Mm -hmm. And if I could only have two, it would have been Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weisz, if I'm being completely honest. But yeah, probably. But we, we'll take what we can get. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't really see anyone else being Jonathan the way John Hanna does. You know, mm -hmm. the man is just absolutely perfect in this role. Yeah. So if, if we're not going to have John Hanna back, then might as well not even have uh, Jonathan in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, I feel like they would do that if he would have said no. They would have just cut out his character. Maybe. I would, I would think. So he's running a bar in Shanghai called Imhotep's. It's all Egyptian themed and stuff. Mm -hmm. Pretty funny. Yeah. Speaking of which, I think like I think this movie is might be the funniest of the trilogy. It did have a lot more humor and some you know jokes in it yeah. compared to the others. Which could be could be grating if you don't like constant humor, but they're all funny jokes, so I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. So they got to stop the uh, the emperor who's just been brought back to life by this uh, by this couple of Chinese. Uh, army officers who want him to bring China into the new world and take over the world and stuff. I don't. I yeah. The, mm. Pretty generic characters, yeah. if we're being completely honest. Yeah. You know, but that's not exactly new for this series. The last one, like the, the whole Imhotep cult, they they weren't pretty. They were pretty one note too. Yeah, they were. But so you know, he this this emperor is trying to bring. He's trying to get back his body because you know he's just a mummy in a in a, in a with a clay covering at this point. Mm -hmm. Every time he gets pissed off, his face breaks and he has to regrow it. That was kind of neat, actually. Yeah. Like just the way this guy's using his powers is pretty creative. At one point, um, you know he he grabs an icicle and cr causes a whole bunch of ice uh, spikes to come up through the ground to to attack the, uh, Rick and them. So that was pretty mm -hmm. neat. And then he. Um, Froze part of the tower that Rick was climbing on to try to uh, attack him, so that he slips off. You know, he, this guy is—he's—he's he's, he's very creative with his powers. Yeah, yeah. And later on, when he uh, gets his body back, he just turns into King Ghidorah and steals <laughs> um, Michelle Yao's daughter in this movie. That was kind of cool. <laughs> but and, and then um, you know he brings back his army to uh, you know conquer the world after they cross the Great Wall of China. They're gonna be in invincible or something i don't know why why, why would they be i don't know it, it doesn't matter but you know so Mich uh, michelle yao she she uh raises the dead of all the people who were killed building the great wall and her and her uh in, in the man she she loved um the the emperor's general yeah i can't remember any of these people's names which is kind of bad you know, and uh, something really neat though the um, 
the the emperor's uh, soldiers. They like they, they fire a whole volley of arrows at at the at Rick Evie and all these uh, skeletons and stuff because you know. Yeah. And you know Rick and Evie, they, of course, are people, so they they duck down get 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 undercover. But all these skeletons are just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's what's fine. that gonna do to us? Yeah, we well, are literally dead. <laughs> we are dead people. This is fine. Yeah. In, in, in Chinese, actually, un, unsubtitled, one of them accidentally knocks off another guy's head, and he says, oh, your head's over here. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, like I said, this movie is doing a lot when it comes to comedy. Mm -hmm. Not so much when it comes to, you know, horror, though. Uh, I feel like... Yeah, not really scary. That, although, that real, that tri that ship had sailed with the yeah, Lemmy Returns, really if we're being honest. Yeah, really the first one creeped me out. Like the the second one freaked me out with like the pygmy mummies and stuff, but oh, like yeah. this one is, this is not doing anything for me when it comes to scaring. No, like, I don't really think it was supposed to either. No, but still, yeah, I would have liked something. Yeah, something a little scary. Like I could still watch the first one and get and still get a little creeped out by by all the things going on, mm -hmm. whether it be. You know, the way Imhotep looks, him getting buried alive, these flesh eating scarabs. Yeah. You know, there's still there's, yeah. there's still something here and there to unsettle me. Mm -hmm. the second one, um, I'm not so much creeped out by the pygmy mummies. They're kind of they're kind of adorable now. <laughs> but still, back in the day when I was six, you know, they, they, they freaked me out. Here, mm -hmm. yeah, nothing. Nothing. even when I was thirteen, nothing. Nothing. Not nothing scaring me in this. Yeah. I am having a lot of fun though. Like I'm just gonna say, based just based on fun factor, this is this is better than the Mummy Returns. Yeah, uh, maybe. But not as good as the first one, obviously. Well, yeah. So who? Um, not who. Uh, what was your uh, favorite part of this one? Um, I like the part where the the daughter calls the Yetis in to help. I like the Yetis; they're pretty cool pretty cool characters. I think it's good that, I mean, you know, if you're ever in danger in the mountains, I feel like a Yeti's a good helper to have. Um, so I like that. The The ending battle was pretty good, too. Yeah, that was pretty um, fun. <laughs> but and I do want to shout out to the, the last scene in the movie, where Jonathan has the diamond, <laughs> and he says, I am done with mummies, I'm going to a place where there are no mummies, he, and he's, he's, going, he's to going to Peru. <laughs> and they, oh, sorry. They put on the screen, mummies were later discovered in Peru. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that cracked me up. I don't know. That was oh, really Jonathan, good, you're crazy. Good comedic timing. Um, which, I thought that was hilarious. Which the fourth mummy movie that they were planning on making was mm -hmm. going to take place in, in Peru, Peru with that like Aztec mummies. So we're going to get. Yeah. Antonio Banderas to play the bad guy. Oh, yeah. That yeah. would have been awesome. That would have been cool. Unfortunately, we did not get yeah. that. They instead rebooted the series with the 2017 Mummy movie with yeah. Tom Cruise. Yeah, that didn't go so well. No, it was not good. Um, now. Yeah. What about. Oh, what were you going to say? I was going to say the ending battle, too. That was oh, pretty fun. That was fun. your favorite part. Yeah, I was gonna, just going to ask. Um, now. Yeah, ending battle was good. Lately, Brendan Fraser has been has said that he would love to do another Mummy movie. Mm -hmm. And I would love him to do another Mummy movie, too. Yeah, I would, That too. would be awesome. Yeah. I would I would absolutely love that. Please, do more. Do do, do that do that Aztec one. Do something with, like, uh, Imhotep and, uh, and, and Ardith. Do, bring them back, too. Yes, Jeez, so we, we want them back. That would be cool. You know, I actually, uh, I, I saw some, something on, uh, Facebook or something about uh, uh, about the uh, about the 2017 movie and how to uh, cross over with these ones. Just like have um, I don't know Rick or something be immortal in this one because this one the 2017 one took place in the modern time. Just have Rick you know wake up or whatever, and then have him team up with Imhotep to take down this take down the uh, the one from this movie. Eh. I don't know about him being immortal. It's a weird. Eh, all of these movies are weird. Yeah. E even the first one, especially the first one. <laughs> these movies are weird, but that's why we love them. Yeah. So, 
Uh, I don't think we need to do a, a, a ranking for these ones because I think we have the same opinion. I feel like, yeah, I feel like we do. First one is the best, yeah. then the second one, yeah. and then the third one. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would say too. Yeah. I mean, obviously the first one's the best. Like I said, that's just the best one. Yeah, and it's like these movies, they, they, the, the quality just dips as yeah, you know, with you each one. Yeah, you can tell. Um, but there are enjoyable things about yeah. all of them, though. Yeah, I like for I, sure. I like all of these movies, but yeah. if if I'm if I only have time for one of them, I'm gonna watch the first one. Oh yeah. Yeah, because we just finished watching the third one, and it was definitely not keeping my attention. I was on my phone the whole time, but when we watched the first one, I don't hmm. even think I picked up my phone. Like, I was on my phone for a good amount of the first one, but that's because... That's because you've seen it I've seen this so times. many times. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I was quoting the lines. Yeah, you're probably just... Like, not even... Under your breath. Not even okay. looking at the screen, just Seeing knowing what it. they say, because I've seen it so many times. <laughs> yeah. This is probably one of the movies I've seen the most, mm -hmm. if I had to make a guess. But you know, one. third one, I you know, I'm trying to keep my attention because again, this is the one I've seen the least. Yeah. But even still, it's like okay. It was hard. This for is me. this is kind of boring. This let's uh, let's see what let's see what uh, Twitter's saying. Uh, oh no, that's stupid. Let's watch the movie again. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. I've said what I need to say. Yeah, so all three are pretty good. Um, although, if we were including the first Scorpion King movie in this ranking, I would probably put that just under the first Mummy, because that was pretty fun. I haven't seen that one, so I cannot give you my opinion on that. Well, it's... Well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Dwayne Johnson movie. Dwayne the Rock Johnson movie. But, like, before he, get, he got all everywhere, you know? Yeah. So, pretty fun. Pretty fun stuff, but... Again, not as fun as the first one. Yeah. All right. That will do it for us. We'll see you next time. So long.